Hey, hey, and welcome back for another Power Back episode. Just in case you are new around here, Power Back episodes are like little mini micro coaching sessions with me. We take a very specific topic. We talk about the thoughts, the feelings, the beliefs, the energies behind it, and then we back it up with grounded, practical ways to do something with it. These episodes are usually like 20 minutes long, quick in and out. And you should also know I'm kind of like a swift kick in the mental ass, followed by the most amazing hug and high five you've ever had. So you can expect lots of love and support around here without all the extra fluffy bullshit. Today, we're talking about the power of decision. One of the things that I see more often than not, particularly in women, is that you get an idea, you get a thought, you get a glimmer of inspiration. It starts to build in your mind and in your body. And before you can even take a singular action forward, you talk yourself out of it. Somewhere deep inside your subconscious, you have formed the belief that you can't. I can't do this because I don't know enough. I can't do this because I don't have time. I can't do this because I don't have the finances. We could insert a bajillion different reasons. But today, I'm going to challenge you to start to shift that narrative. Because what if you decided today that instead of I can't, What if you decided that I can? And then most importantly, what if you back that up with, I will? Because more often than not, it's not all these external sources or resources that are stopping you. It's yourself. And when you switch from convincing yourself that you can't to convincing yourself that you can, everything in your life and your business starts to shift because of it. Before we dig into the depths of that, though, I want to remind you that I'm teaching a workshop specifically on some of the stuff that we're talking about today. This is a five-day workshop called Mindfuckery. Mindfuckery is all about getting to know the thoughts, the beliefs, the systems that are stored in your subconscious, bringing them to light. Me planting a handful of seeds that get you to think differently and then forming new healthier habits that support who you actually want to be instead of what your mind, your brain, past circumstances, or other people tell you that you should. So we're going to spend five days together, walk through this together as a group to understand and get to know yourself better on a subconscious level, and then learn really practical ways to start to shift it. The goal and the intent of this workshop is one, to be with like-minded people because community and connection over everything, but two, to learn how to get out of your head so that you can actually make progress so that you can build momentum and feel good while you're doing it. Registration is open and limited. So go to lauraora.com forward slash learn to grab your seat today. All right. So let's, let's talk about this, shall we? This feeling like I can't. And I want to acknowledge that this is easier. It sounds so much easier than what it actually is, right? This is, this is the work. You know, we always hear people talk about the work, myself included. This type of stuff, this is the work right? This is not a quick fix. This is not a hack. This is not a five-step program. This is not going to guarantee you success overnight. What it is going to do, however, is start to reframe what's happening in your mind. And if we can reframe what's happening in your mind, we can shift the way that your life looks and feels. Because like I mentioned, it's not about your ability to do something. It's not about the resources or the figuring it out and all that. Like that's all tangible. You can figure things out you have before. And I know that you can, again, what's actually stopping you and many, many others is that you convince yourself that you can't, you convince yourself that it's not for you. You convince yourself that you can't figure it out. Those thoughts then become beliefs and those beliefs become subconscious patterns. And then we wash, rinse, repeat it, live it every single day. But beating up on yourself, talking yourself out of things, convincing yourself that you can't, it's not really working anymore, is it? In fact, I would imagine that you're probably at a point right now, if you're listening to this and you're like, I, it is so uncomfortable to not, but I can't seem to get past myself. It's fucking infuriating to know that I have this idea inside of me, that I have this vision inside of me, that there's this like deep seated knowing that this is where I'm supposed to be and what I'm supposed to do, but I can't seem to take any action moving forward towards it. And when I do, I usually end up sabotaging it in some way. You see, when we tell ourselves for long enough that I can't do something, again, that forms new beliefs. 
And what happens in your exterior world is all of this shit ends up popping up to help reinforce why that is seemingly true. So the real question comes down to, is this actually true? Or have I believed this into my reality? And now I'm like laser focused on proving why it's true. It's, it's kind of like one of those things, like your brain wants you to be happy. And so whatever your brain is thinking and feeling, it's like, okay, I need to find more information to prove this right. You know, like if you all of a sudden you're just like, you know what I really want, I want an emerald green blazer. You're thinking about it. You're, you're pinning pins on Pinterest about it. All of a sudden now you're seeing ads for it on your Facebook and you go to the store and wouldn't, you know, someone's wearing an emerald green fucking blazer. And you're like, what the hell? That was my idea. That's what I wanted to do. How, how is that just showing up? You know, that's, that's what I want to do. It, it's not a negative. Fantastic. I can see how that actually looks on somebody now. Thank you for showing up here. The point is your brain is like, okay, you've been doing this long enough. I want to show you proof now. I want to show you why this is true. I want to show you why this is accurate. I want to show you why this is possible. So if we are constantly telling ourselves that we cannot, guess what your brain is going to do? It's going to take away the time. It's going to pack your calendar. It's going to fall into old patterns and habits. The washing machine is going to break and flood the basement. You know, I, I'm not saying catastrophic or big, stupid things are going to happen, but I'm going to say that anything that does happen, you're going to be like, well, see, see, this is why I can't. When I want to have something nice, when I want to do something for myself, when I want to grow my business, see, I told you, this is why this happens. And that, my friend, is the cycle breaker. Stop blaming shit that's happening in your life for why you can't have what you want. Because it comes down to a decision. Is stupid shit going to happen in life? Absolutely. I have yet to met a human who hasn't gone through a challenge, a struggle, or is currently going through something. But I have met a substantial amount of people that say, you know what, even though all of this seemingly feels like it's on fire, I still believe that I can. I trust that this is going to work out. And even though I don't feel great in this moment, I'm going to hang on to the little bit of belief that I know that I have inside of me. When you decide that you can, you start to shift your beliefs. And when your beliefs shift, then your actions start to shift. And when your actions shift, then everything in your life and your business starts to look very different. You see, your subconscious mind is always being fed information. And that includes the information that you're giving it as well. So even in the moments where you're like, I don't know how this is going to work out. I don't know the ins and the outs. I don't know the who. I don't know what the timeline is. Fuck, I don't even know what I'm going to do next. But you know what? I believe in it enough to figure it out. Your subconscious is like, got it. This is important to us. Let me find ways to prove why this is true. I'm going to give you a couple of examples from some clients, coaching clients that I've worked with and how we switched from the I can't to the I can and how everything fucking changed for them. So this first client was like, you know, I, I really want to grow my business, but I can't because I don't have time. And I know that time, time is always one of the big ones, especially like in the power leak quiz. If you've not yet taken that, if you go to lauraora.com, um, right on the homepage is a link to take the power league quiz. It'll take you like, I don't know, less than five minutes, but it'll tell you where you are unintentionally giving away your power. And then I'll send you some emails on how you can start to reclaim that. But from the results on the back end, of course, I can see what the common power leaks are. The mind is always number one, has been since day one, continues to be the strongest contender. But the second one is time. Time is finicky because we all have different life situations and scenarios. Maybe there's kiddos in your life. Maybe there's an aging parent that you're helping to take care of. Maybe you're on 14 different board of directors and volunteering for 8,000 different things. It's important to understand and recognize that each of our schedules look very different than the next. But if we shift all that aside, we're really just focusing on the belief that I don't have time to build my business. And so as she's believing this to be her truth, her reality supports that. But so you have an understanding of how this actually shows up and looks for people. And maybe this is true for you. Some things that she was doing that we brought to the surface was we realized she's packing her calendar with all kinds of shit, overscheduling, saying yes to everything, taking on every single meeting under the sun, the volunteering and the doing this and the doing that and taking care of this for somebody else. And while there is a time and a place to help support others, 
if we're not supporting ourselves, it's really hard to gain traction and momentum. She wasn't scheduling in time for her to work on the business. Everyone else's needs came before her own. People pleasing, by the way, likes to show up in this. So there was no time to intentionally work on CEO type of things. There wasn't time to create content, to write posts, to send out emails. She wasn't delegating, which meant she was overworking, staying in the weeds of her business and not able to like come up for air. And every single day, she was living the same cycle with the same frustration at the end of every day. I feel like I've worked my face off and nothing is growing. So to shift this, to start to take her power back in her time, we switched the phrase, we switched the focus to an I can phrase. And that I can phrase is I prioritize time to grow my business. And that looks like intentionally blocking in time to work on the business, saying no to things that are either not aligned or she simply didn't have time for. Delegating some tasks to free up her time. See how quickly and easily this starts to add up and is able to be consistent with creating content to put out into the world. And guess what happens because of all of this? She now has time to grow her business, and her business is growing because she prioritized her time. That looks like more clients, that looks like more revenue, and that looks like not working her face off to get all of it. Another client uh, that I can't mentality was I can't show up the way that I really want to in my business. Ah, yes, this is a deep seated belief that many people have because, oh, you know, heaven forbid we be like a normal human inside the professional business space. Because she felt like she couldn't, truly couldn't show up as herself in the business space, she was consistently putting herself into a box, muting and diluting down her message, making sure that everything was crafted perfectly consistently felt like, oh, I want to, I have this big idea, or this is how I want to do something or say something. And then second guessing it and then toning it down, muting it down and ultimately lowering her impact. This type of mentality also leads to like trying a hundred different things just to try to find something that feels good. But spoiler alert, just to let you know, doing a bunch of new things is not going to give you that feeling. What's going to give you the feeling of fulfillment and joy and ease is by doing things and saying things the way that truly resonates with you the most. I am a thousand percent recommending that you be your fullest self in your business. I like to say, be the same person from nine to five as you are from five to nine. And while there are different circumstances and situations where you are a a different version of your own self, right? Like I, I look at it as this timeline from, from couch to ball gown and then everything in between, right? Like there, there's a time and a place to wear a ball gown. There's a time and a place to dress up and um, wear your professional gear, whatever the, that is to you. There's also a time and a place for, you know, ripped jeans and a t-shirt and most certainly pajamas or yoga pants. But as a whole, As long as you are staying true to yourself on that timeline, regardless of which stage or phase that you need to tap into, you will continue to feel fulfilled. It's when we venture off of our own guide, our own line, our own measurement system, that we start to become something that we're not. And that's where things get uncomfortable. And not the like temporary discomfort that I usually talk about, the one that gets you to where you want to be. No, it's like, this is a force. This is a making. This is a I'm trying to be something that I'm not, and therefore I just don't want to do it. So with this mentality of I can't show up how I really want to, there's very little encouragement and excitement behind showing up. Not to mention the fact that if you're not feeling fulfilled and you really feel like you're outside of yourself, comparison, ooh, comparison loves to sneak up on this then because then you're you're seeing people that look like from what we know in a very short period of time, what look like who are being themselves, expressing themselves the way they want to, dressing the way that they want to, speaking in an authentic voice. And we compare ourselves. I'm not where she is. I'm not doing what they're doing. I don't have that kind of revenue. I don't have that kind of confidence. And all in all, it just becomes a giant shitstorm. The real power back moment The real truth, the real growth comes from allowing yourself to be your fullest self, the same person that you are from nine to five as you are from five to nine. 
So the I can statement shift here is I make a bigger impact when I embrace my fullest self. Uh, Let me say that again. I make the biggest impact when I embrace my fullest self. And when you start to give yourself the opportunity to speak more like yourself, to show up the way that you want to, to dress the way that you want to, to be unapologetically who you are, it's like you shine up a beacon for the people that love and appreciate your method, your style, your approach, your tone. And they're like, I get it now. Maybe I've heard what you've said a thousand different times, but the way that you say it, that impacted me today. When you start showing up with the, I can be who I am, you free yourself of all that extra gunk. You just start to create like shit just literally will pour out of you. You attract the right clients. You attract the right opportunities. And I can promise you it takes substantially less effort to be yourself than it does to continuously be something that you're not. So a recap here today, how this works is your beliefs form your thoughts, your thoughts form your actions. So the trick is to bring insanely radical awareness to your belief system. What do you believe to be true? And a good place to start is to recognize where you have resistance. You know, I love to say, that the thing that you want the most is often behind the thing that you resist the most. So if you look and start to bring radical self-awareness to the places and the opportunities and the habits and the actions where you have resistance, meaning you want to do something and then you pause and you talk yourself out of it and you do something else instead. The thing that you keep thinking about, but also keep avoiding. The thing that if someone brings it up, you just like brush it off and change the subject. If you start to recognize where you have this resistance, that will tell you so much about what your belief system is. And this, my friend, is the root. This is where you get to make the change and the impact. This gives you the chance to understand and recognize the underlying belief. And when you understand that, you can catch it in the moment, right? You know, I teach the power back process. If you're not familiar with that, back in Powerback 161, I walk you through that. That process helps you to catch and understand the the thoughts and the beliefs that are happening. Because when you can catch it, then you're conscious, right? Now you have brought your thoughts, your feelings, and your beliefs to the forefront. And now you can make a conscious decision on what you're going to do next. You can make a conscious decision on what's actually true. And when you do that, you can change your action. This is the work, my friends, over and over and over again, with every hesitation, with every layer of resistance, with every, I'm not sure if I can, or, you know, I've convinced myself that I can't, with every limiting belief and fearful thought. If you start to implement this process with every single one of those, I promise you, literally, I promise you that everything in your life and your business will start to change for the better. You'll learn more about yourself in this process. This muscle that you're building will get stronger. And everything that you keep vision boarding about, journaling about, thinking and daydreaming about truly can start to become your reality. If you want to free yourself, if you want to start living this level of success that you know is possible, and you want to impact other people in a positive way while you're doing it, this is where you start. I'll also remind you that if you want some support to get this process going, the Mindfuckery Workshop, this is the shit that we're doing together. So if you want some accountability, you want some clarity, you want some guidance, go to lauraora.com forward slash learn to grab your seat today. Next week, we are talking about this really juicy topic called empowered rage. Vanessa Alfaro comes on and we talk about harnessing the power of rage and anger and this big emotion and how it can really actually truly set us free. In the meantime, get social with me on TikTok, Instagram, and now also Facebook. You can find me using at that Laura Aura. And as always, until I see you next time, stay gutsy.